thank you, David, for pointing out like uh, how to big data, uh, maybe a world of indistinction emerges, yeah? uh, a world where distinctions come to an end, where meaning, representation, causation, theory, uh, subjects, and objects uh, come uh, to an end. Yeah? Uh, I want to press you a bit or ask you that can you, because you left out the part of hacking, yeah? and for me the world of indistinction sounds like quite like uh, a quite scary world. Yeah? So is there a way out? Or, uh, what does the hacking, what could it mean actually? Yeah? How do we hack this world of uh, indistinction? So I think I would like to hear some thoughts about uh, this too. Do yeah, let's take together a some questions. Yeah, there's one in the back there. Thank you, David. Um, I, I want to kind of try to press the question that somehow the world of post binaries can only exist in an absolute binary to, to modernity. It's a perplexing requirement that it's both post binary and dependent on that binary. And so, to kind of illustrate the point, I guess three components of your title have their um, origin in this city in 1851 uh, when, when John Snow first mapped the correlation uh, between the occurrence of wells and the persistence of cholera. The origin of geoscience, the origin of, of governmentality in the form of public health, and, and the relationship between sensing mapping and governance uh, in the context of, at least, of, of an urban situation. And I think uh, John Snow's ability to prevent, or at, at least bring to an end, uh, the cholera outbreak in that year has an, a, a really interesting comparison for you to the Google search function of can we detect and prevent diseases on the basis of the geosocial location of the IP address from which the search is, is taking place. And, and you made a really interesting set of remarks about that. And so I wonder, uh, on, on the philosophical sense, how does the post-binary rely on the absolute binarization of, of modernity versus this situation? But then looking to this question of, of a kind of correlation that Snow was, was, was the first to develop, how, how do you see Snow and Google as, as either a difference in degree or a difference in kind? I think we can add one or two more. Yeah, there's one here. Uh, and also one here. Uh, thank you, David, for the interesting talk. You proposed a different topic, which is a governmentality of the digital mapping, sensing, and hacking. And everybody seems to know what you will be talking about and what, sub what the subject of mapping, sensing, and hacking might be. But you switch to the virtue instead of the actual world and uh, switch the equally uh, interesting topic, So, uh, which slightly, actually, differs from the type of governmentality thesis. Could you talk about what the transition or correlation between the two topics might be? There's one, there's one more. Then you can answer. OK. It's very interesting. Thank you very much. And um, I was uh, Rupert Walden from um, uh, PhD at Westminster. Um, I was interested, um, you were making connections to Antoinette's um, discussion, which is also extremely interesting. And I, I thought both of you, in a sense, raised the question for me whether, um, although much, of course, does seem um, radically new, at the same time, arguments around, for instance, the disappearance of the subject in the mind are very reminiscent of um, somebody that perhaps Christian touched on and, and his talk, the Frankfurt critique. So the idea of subject and object, that Adornian. Um, discussion of the idea of, in a sense, um, the disappearance of the subject, um, but also the importance, obviously, of, of arguing against that, and the connection between that and um, a critique of instrumental reason. So it just feels that because some of these things are at the same time very reminiscent, this, this talk of, an, of, of something that's already disappeared, but um, and yet very current, it'd be interesting to hear you expand on that, if you could, if you would. Okay, is that enough right. questions, yeah. Christian? Okay, so, um, 
the map, let me do it in order. So um, I was going to talk about mapping first, because to my mind, mapping is the way in to big data and sensing. I think it's crucial. Snow's work on cholera already looks at how the virtual comes into the world. I want to argue, a bit like I was doing correlation in the actual and the virtual, how, it, how it's very easy to begin to conflate the two just at the moment today when we need to be clearer about the epistemological and ontological changes. I want to argue there's mapping in the actual and mapping in the virtual. And, uh, and what I was... Anyway, I was talking about what I understand to be mapping in the virtual. And how I, and so I understand that, so the cholera, ma the mapping, i.e. the superimposition of dots of cholera with dots of wells to enable you to see something you couldn't see before. Mapping brings something into the world when that link between cholera and water is there. However, that's not a causal link, causal everywhere there's water in the world, there's cholera. No way. It's a very specific path dependency thing that enables us to then deal with something. I call that mapping in the actual. And mapping in the actual already begins to deconstruct the idea that there's universal lines of causation. It begins to like do the work of indistinction through dividing up the world. Often in our big data discussions, we talk about drilling down. I want to argue that from 1851, the ontology of drilling down to, to bring things together through correlation, to see things that we couldn't see, that's the beginning of big data capitalism. It's the opening up of a world that wasn't there before, a science of correlationism. And I think I already alluded to the power of that science with the thermometer and the compass, but your example of snow and cholera is just as important. So when I'm thinking about your work in Jakarta on flooding, I think there's a lot of parallels there. The difference is that we're beginning to extend the mechanisms of the machines for correlating and seeing through correlation. But, and we're moving and moving away from the world of causation, the world of laws, of universalities. And I would like to suggest that from the 70s onwards, we've done that drilling down process. In neo-institutionalism or neoliberalism, we call tracing path dependencies. And that, on one level, is a critique of the old world of the actual with its fixities, and it's beginning to draw us in to a world of the virtual, where things are not fixed in their relationships, where the fluidity of the correlations is all that counts. The more we drill down, the more we can like, do the correlation. And in thinking through... So, I think these things have... I mean, it's not like I've even written the book and you can read it. I, I can't even write the book that I want to write on the mapping and sensing and hacking. But I know that there's something about mapping and the, and the, the superpositioning of the, of the virtual. But I, I need to know more. Uh, don't, don't we all? Um, so when I was going to do my talk on the digitalities, I wanted to say about the new ways of governing through the thing that we call the digital, but the digital isn't very conceptually clear. Now, obviously, big data doesn't help us either because everyone's got a different view. I was tempted to argue that big data capitalism is war on the digital. The digital understood as a universalizing, homogenizing, relativizing thing, and big data is about the analog. But how do we bring those new subjects? How do we bring those new analog views of the world where nothing can be reduced to anything else? Everything is special and specific. That world comes into being through correlations in the virtual. The new subjects, the new things in the world that can never be entities, that are always going to be indistinct, they're not like they were there already. Big data capitalism brings them into the world. Uh, and we would normally see that as contextual, as analog, as not digital. And that, but that would be super confusing. But um, anyway, so I wanted to start with mapping, mapping from 1851 maybe, um, and then move through the entry into the virtual through sensing, responding, the, you know, no brain, no subject intervening as the world begins to autonomously govern itself, um, to a world of hacking where, where we can't even think of a problem anymore. Big data capitalism still has problems. We're still seeing things to do things. There's still a little hidden subject. 
Big data capitalism is a bit like post-humanism, where the world, the world that's knowable and governable, where the events are going to be pre-evented, the world where nothing happens, you, we know that's the fantasy of the moderns. Um, and, and we move beyond that. I mean, hopefully I'm wrong, but we move beyond it in the entirely where it's just normal, where it's the most play, yeah, as the object orientated ontologists would say, we're just playing because in the world of the virtual, playing is the only thing. We're recomposing. Nothing is ever going to be fixed. Nothing is ever going to be ended or, or linear, but we're continually exploring the newness that every moment is going to be different. Every moment has opportunities and possibilities. Anyway, anyway, um, it's difficult enough to do sensing. Uh, anyway, anyway, Frankfurt School, yeah, this is a wonderful moment. 70 years after uh, the, the death of enlightenment, what's it? 70, yeah, it was, a, it was a wonderful 70 years of critical theory where everything worked in the actual. We all eventually, after Dorno and Horkheimer became Foucauldians, uh, we lived a life of disillusionment uh, with the world. The world was always never going to be good enough for us. Um, the data would never equal the world. Uh, now, unfortunately, in the new world that big data capitalism is bringing in, we, that's, that's not the world, the new world, can't, we can't be disillusioned with it because there's nothing else. There's nothing behind it. We know that we can't go back to a fantasy of the past of the Frankfurt theorists, but the wonderful world of the everlasting now. And so the Frankfurt School is based on the Holocaust and Hiroshima and stuff. How can we still defend thinking in a world where thinking and instrumental thought leads to that? Big data capitalism, that's the answer. There is no instrumentality in the world of the virtual. There is no thinking subject. There is no danger of a holocaust. You can be as radical as you want in the autonomous world where work is life is life, like that. Critique can be playful and happy. You can never accuse critique of leading to Stalinisms and dictatorships because there isn't a program, there's no subject. Even the Vanguard party is just a party. I mean, you know, it's all gone. So, sorry. Um, I think we can uh, have a couple more questions. So there's one there, and Laszlo, and uh, here. No, there's one in the back. I think he was first, Laszlo is second. <laughs> Shall I go? Okay. So, um, that's a lovely fantasy. Um, uh, and uh, I think what one thing that came out very clearly out of Antoinette's talk is the idea of that all this is based on the, uh, on the philosophy of pure inductivism, uh, which was, uh, you know, that philosophy that was, uh, first of all, uh, coined by Francis Bacon at the beginning of the 17th century. Um, and... I think what your talk kind of reminded me of is that, you know, the technocracy that, uh, you know, Bacon founded, the system of power over people in the world through technology uh, is still very live. And I've, I've had this intuition for a long time that, um, you know, that postmodernism is merely the latest phase of, uh, of technocratic thinking. And, um, yeah... Uh, I mean, the idea that you used the phrase a moment ago, that the world governs its, or, you know, the world is uh, autonomously governing itself. No, uh, what Francis Bacon, the, the, his maxim was, uh, knowledge is not knowledge, knowledge is power. He said that 350 years before Michel Foucault, and he knew, he knew what he was talking about. So um, I'd like to hear you say something about the operation of power in this fantasy world that you're creating. Um, so, uh, uh, I would like to ask your opinion about the, about the meaning of virtuality. I, I'm a philosopher, so I, I would be interested in, the, in, in which sense did you use the concept of virtual, virtual? Uh, because uh, um, it seems to me probably, probably it, it was a Dolosian uh, ideology, or I don't know, or I, I'm sure it was not an Aristotelian one, because in the Aristotle, uh, Aristotle used the concept of uh, uh, potentiality and actuality. So the potential and actual, and the, the, but you, you apply the virtual, the concept of virtual. 
Is it ideology or some? Uh, this is interesting from the point of view that how do you think about the nature of uh, cultural entities or, or the value, for example? How do you think? Uh, what, what's the nature of value? Is it a, a is it is it a virtual being or is it an actu is it a, I don't know actual being? How, so, so such a kind of uh, problems I think is very important if you would like to understand the uh, the the co process of labor and 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 uh, the uh, and the government like this. Okay. There's one more. There's one more. Yeah. There you go. Paulina, why don't you indicate? Otherwise, they won't be able to give you a microphone if you did want to say something. OK. Or was it? It seems to me that what is at stake in your answer to Antoinette is the notion of change. Because uh, what Antoinette was trying, in my view, um, I cannot talk for her, but in my understanding, was trying to construct a, a, a different paradigm. Uh, you are, it seems to me, you can tell me, you are in some way following that line. You are constructing in some way, or, or hinting to a different paradigm, but in a different way. Now, the point is that we are used, because we are being immersed in the nar narrative of progress, to think from a radical point of view that change is a, is a good thing. We want to change. Well, actually, we discovered that a change can be a good or a bad thing. So we can change for the worse. And it happened, unfortunately, quite recently. So uh, the answer to change that Antoinette was proposing was, at the end of her talk, fabulation. It's a performative answer. Uh, it seems to me that the answer you are giving is, let's think uh, on, on two levels, and let's use this virtual as a kind of theoretical tool to deal with big data. But again, uh, I understand why fabulation is an alternative, what is proposing. It is not so clear in which way we could use your virtual, and that's my question. Oh. And Jody? Yeah, I, I think my question um, follows up on that one, though that one was more eloquent. I don't think I understand what you're doing. Right? I don't, I, at first I thought that um, by affiliating your remarks and connecting them with Antoinette that you were um, describing um, a, um, a kind of ideological formation, a, the kind of the, the techno ideology of big data capitalism. And then I started to think, no, you're not describing this with an, as a kind of critical move at all. You're basically, in some ways, it seems like embracing it and presenting us with a fait accompli that's where we are. And, and I don't know if it's because I'm like American and very literal and there's British irony going on or what. I mean, I just, I, I just can't <laughs> tell if there's a way that, um, I mean, it seems like you're almost gleeful in the description. And I mean, and, and, the thing, and then the examples to me seem so um, bizarre, right? Like, I, I don't find it convincing to say there's no difference between flooding and not flooding, because there are differences for the people whose kids drown, right? I don't think that it makes sense to emphasize, to say there's no division between peace and conflict, because the people who are killed by you know, the US drones, they experience a difference. And so I, I, I just can't figure out what is happening. Good. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. Do you want to respond? Yeah, uh, of course I do. Um, so much. Um, I'm not a philosopher or anything, so when I'm talking about the virtual, I think I'm just talking about superposition, where everything is there without distinction. Um, I sort of, I, I imagine probably wrongly that the world of distinctions is a specifically modern world with modern type of distinctions which enabled us to imagine ourselves as subjects, 
vis-a-vis -vis that world, you know. Um, it, and it seems to me, hopefully I'm wrong, there's been a sort of a sea change in, in our view of modernity and its achievements. And maybe I've missed a meet, maybe I don't need to worry. I sense that I live in a world where everything that used to be good and an achievement is now seen as a problem and, an, and a barrier, as artifice, as e evading the, the engagements that we need. I see a world where there's a war on distinctions. And therefore, I want to flag up what I think is a huge problem, that um, the war on distinctions is going to destroy our world and take meaning, possibilities, humanness along with it. I work in academia. All my friends want to destroy meaning. Anyone tries to make an argument, they'll say, no, but what about this? What about that? Aren't you being too abstract? You know, whatever. And um, I don't think it's going to be easy to bring mean, a, a, a meaningful world back. I don't know what it will look like. And so I, I don't have a lot, which is where I differ. I don't really differ, but strategically, tactically, maybe wrongly, I don't have a, a revolutionary vanguard party behind me. I don't see a revolutionary situation. I'm just doing academic work. And um, in that world, I have to do the best academic work that I can, which means pursuing questions and opening things up. I'm not really concerned with my, my normative. You know, I'm against ev everything. But I'm particularly against an inability to see what the problems are. And to my mind, I try to draw out that, that this correlational working, this reduction of the world to responsivities, this war on distinction, I wanted to flag it up as a problem. Uh, shoot me if I haven't got a transformative solution, but I'm, I'm not sure if it's, it's my problem or my fault. So the fabulation stuff, maybe that will work as a way of rebuilding communities, narrative stories, new distinctions for the future world that we're building. That's, that's fine, I'm, I'm not against that. And I'm, not, I'm just trying to look at what big data capitalism might mean, and I think that's not the worst thing in the world. I mean, anyway. So, on that note, um, on that note, yeah, that's, that's, that's enough. Yeah, I think we should somehow wrap up the conference. Yeah? Uh, well, so you I can do that. All right, I'll do that. Uh, so I think it was two uh, excellent days somehow. What I take uh, away from myself yeah, uh, when I look, uh, not at single talks, but uh, on the two days as a whole, yeah, all talks uh, and all uh, discussions uh, that we uh, had, uh, is that big data and big data capitalism seems to change the world somehow. Yeah? Uh, there are lots of dangers in it uh, that we have been uh, discussing. Yeah? I mean, the discussion now at the end uh, reminded me also that Adorno was saying that uh, when the world becomes completely identical, then that's the danger of a totalitarian world. Yeah? So the danger probably is that, uh, that, uh, that uh, everything becomes identical and fully instrumental uh, through uh, big data. However, uh, and that uh, it's a post-human world yeah, where human subjects are no longer in control, but algorithms are in control. The algorithms are actually controlled themselves by capital uh, and uh, state power. Uh, and I think what we have been stressing somehow, so I took some notes of terms that were used uh, in different uh, talks, yeah? uh, and this was uh, much more related to agency and to politics. Yeah? Uh, so people stressed self-management, uh, struggle, political action, collectivities, uh, effects, re-enchantment, uh, appropriation of technologies, critique, uh, reflexivity, uh, political organization, hope, uh, ethics, uh, political uh, ac uh, action, uh, uh, and, and so on. Yeah? Uh, could, you could add uh, other, uh, other terms too. But what all of these terms uh, somehow mean is some form of, uh, of, of agency, of, of human uh, subject. So it seems that the focus of the conference on uh, critique and activism can remind us that in this world of uh, big data, uh, it's important uh, that to bring in the human perspective. Yeah? So all of these are human agency uh, pros uh, processes. Uh, so it's a vision for, uh, that we've been formulating together probably uh, of uh, a 
world that is different from big data capitalism. It is a digital world, uh, but it is one that corresponds uh, to human interests uh, and where human beings uh, as social beings uh, play uh, an important uh, role. So I think for me the, uh, the, the task would be for all of us yeah, that we turn the digital humanities, you could say, that are controlled by the logic of big data uh, into a kind of radical digital humanism. Yeah? And for myself, uh, I would add that this uh, the, uh, digital humanism uh, could be a, a digital socialist humanism, yeah? where the human being and human interests stand in the middle. And I think that's my conclusion. Do you want to draw a, a general conclusion maybe also? I was going to say, if you don't have homes to go to, we're going to go to the Yorkshire Grey around the corner. You're welcome to, to join us. But otherwise, a big hand for the audience. Yes, and I think we, and I think we also should thank, uh, we should thank, uh, of course, our speakers, our chairs, uh, and so on. And we should especially thank uh, the visible and invisible uh, helpers who have made all of this uh, possible. Uh, so that's uh, Denise, is the mastermind of the organization team. Uh, and it's also, it's also, the G, Sarah, and Trent, the PhD helpers. Thank you. There was also uh, Jane, uh, and there's Theo, our technician, who recorded uh, everything yes. and took care of the microphone. And then uh, there were also uh, people taking care of the cleaning, uh, the catering, uh, and so on, that were more invisible for us, but are also very important. So let's thank them. And thanks for everyone for coming and the big uh, interest. I think it was a very exciting conference. Thank you.